And now, WBW Theatre. Welcome to WBW Theatre. Listen to a series of radio dramas, comedies, mysteries, thrillers, westerns, all dedicated to preserving the golden age of radio. Those thrilling days of yesteryear, way back when families gathered together around the living room radio to join the theater of the mind. Listen now, as we take you way back when imagination ruled and creativity had no limits. Listen now to... WBW Theater. Adventures in time and space, told in future tense. Dimension, Dimension X. 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 Strange are the uses of providence. Is this how the end will come for mankind? with 10,000 explosions and a flash of radioactive gas? Or will destruction come more subtly, extended to us gently and innocently in, well, let's say, the hand of a child? Who knows in what manner Zero Hour may arrest the world we know? It was a perfect summer day in the year 1985. The streets were lined with green, peaceful trees. Businessmen sat in their quiet offices, taping their voices or watching televisors. Rockets hovered like darning needles in the blue sky. There was the universal quiet conceit and easiness of men accustomed to peace, quite certain that there would never be war or trouble again. There were no traitors among men, no unhappy ones, no disgruntled ones. The world was upon stable ground. Sunlight illumined the suburbs, and the town drowsed on a tide of warm, sunlit air. On the lawns, the children played, catapulting this way and that across the green grass, shouting at each other, holding hands, flying in circles, climbing trees, and laughing. And in the homes, busy mothers prepared for the evening arrival of their husbands. Excuse me, Mom. Good heavens, Mink. What's all the excitement? We're playing the game, Mommy. The most exciting game ever. What are you doing in that cabinet? I need some tools from Daddy's kit. Your father may not like that. Oh, I'll take good care of them, Mom. I promise. Very well. Don't you lose anything. Oh, thank you, Mom. You want a glass of milk? Can't stop now, Mom. What's the name of the game, Mink? Invasion. <laughs> Invasion. What will they think of next? Now this, and this, and now this, and this. Now put that there, and bring that over here. Oh no, you ninny. Now get back while I fix this. There, they want it this way, see? Here, just let me fix it. Hey, Mink! Ah, oh, Mink. It's that smarty pants, Joseph, Connors. Don't let him play. He's 12 years old. Don't worry, I won't. What you playing, Mink? None of your business, smarty pants. I want to play. Can't. Why not? You're too old. Just because you're only eight? No, you'd only laugh at us and spoil the invasion. Make him go away, Mink. Go away. This is my backyard. Eh, uh, who wants to play with you and your old fairies anyway? They aren't fairies. Ah, nuts to you. I don't want to play anyway. Good riddance. I'm glad you didn't let him play, Mink. He'd only laugh. Now, we better talk to Drill and get some more instructions. Or, now, here's your pad and pencil. Where's Drill? Drill. Here, Drill. Drill. Where's he, Drill? 
He's in the rose bush, I think. I'll talk to him myself, and you write it down on the pad. Okay. Drill! Drill! Okay. Drill wants you to write down triangle. Uh, what's a triangle? Never mind. Drill will tell us when he wants us to know it helps the invasion. How do you spell it? Hmm. Well, I'll ask Drill. Drill, how do you spell... Mink! Here's your mother, looking out the window. Mink! Yes, mother? Who are you talking to? The rosebush, Mom. Only it's not really a rosebush. That's Drill. Who's Drill? He is planning the invasion. Oh, I see. Well, you'd better come in and clean up for supper. Your daddy will be home soon. In just a second, Mom. You got that art? Let's see now. Four, nine, seven, an A, B, and X, and a fork, and some string, and a, and a hexagony? Hexagonal, droopy. Oh. Come on, Mink. Supper's in ten minutes. Okay, Mom. Just a minute. I have to tell Drill. I wish we didn't have to eat, though. It holds up the invasion. Oh, Mink, for heaven's sake, slow down. You'll choke on that soup. I can't, Mom. It's a matter of life and death. What's a matter of life and death? The invasion. And what invasion is that? Oh, just some silly game the children have been playing. Uh, well, whatever it is, Mink, it'll wait until you've finished your supper, I'm sure. I don't want any more. You barely touched anything. Oh, but Drill is waiting for me, Daddy. Drill? Who's Drill? He lives in a rose bush in our backyard. Imagination, Henry. Such nonsense. <laughs> Better run now. You'll sit through dessert, young lady. Aw, oh, gee, Daddy. And while you're at it, tell me more about this new game. It's Martians invading the Earth, Daddy. What? Well, well, not exactly Martians, Daddy. They're from, well, gee, I don't know, from up. And from inside that little head of yours. You're laughing at me. Drill said you would. You'll kill Drill and everybody. Oh, I didn't know you could kill a Martian. But it it's not really a Martian, Mom. Maybe he's from Jupiter or, or Venus, maybe. <laughs> Imagine. They couldn't figure out a way to attack the Earth. We're in impregnable? Impregnable, dear. Well, that's the word Drill said. Impreg... Well, anyway, that was the word, Mom. The same word. Anyway, so we're helping him. Who's helping who? Well, the kids are helping the Martians. Oh, a fifth column, eh? Well... Drill says in order to make a good fight, you gotta have a new way of surprising the people. That way you win, and he says also you gotta have help from your enemy. Pretty slick, those Martians. Using the kids for the fifth column, eh, Mary? And hiding under rose bushes too, Henry. Don't forget that. That's because grown-ups never look under rose bushes, only kids. Oh, I see. Well, finish your fruit, darling. You can play for an hour afterward. Mary. Oh, it's so nice out, Henry, and there's no school tomorrow. Very well. Till 8 o'clock. Drill says after the invasion, we can stay up as late as we want. Hmm. No more baths either. Oh, is that so? And we can watch all the grown-up televisor shows. I don't wonder this invasion has caught on among the kids. Well, some of the kids are giving us trouble, like, like Dale Britz and Petey Jarek. They're grown-ups, so they won't believe in the invasion. They make fun. 
Worse than parents, even. I hate them worst. We'll kill them first. Oh, I hope you're saving your father and me for last. But Drill says you're dangerous. What? But I, I think they'll let me keep you because I'm hoping so much I'll talk to Drill. Maybe he won't have to kill you. Mary, I think this nonsense has gone far enough. Can I go out now, please? Well, run along, dear. Don't worry, Dad. I won't let them hurt ya. Mary, I think the child's taking this game entirely too seriously. Invasion? Oh, Henry, you know how Mink is. Besides, all children have their aggressions. Better to get them out in the open, I suppose. Maybe you're right. Um, I was wondering about bridge with the Jacksons tonight, Mary. All right, but, uh, you look tired, dear. Why don't you sit in the relaxer for a while and get a massage? I'll sew for a while until it's time to... Oh, I wanted to call my sister Helen. Oh, good. Find out when her husband's going to return my golf clubs. <laughs> Uh, would you please connect me with Mrs. Helen Rogerson on channel 72Z Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? What's your channel, please? 817X, New Rochelle, New York. Thank you. Just a moment. Go ahead, you can see your party now. Hello, Mary. How are things in New York? Fine, Helen. How are things in Pittsburgh? You look tired. Oh, I've been having a terrible time with the children. Sick? No, just underfoot. They've got a new game that's got me about crazy. It's called Invasion. Did, did you say Invasion? <laughs> that's right. Well, isn't that strange? My mink is playing it, too. My boy Tim is all involved with some imaginary fellow named Drill who's running the Invasion. Must be a new password. Mink likes him, too. How do you suppose these games start? My backyard looks like a scrap drive. They've got every conceivable kind of mechanical gadget arranged out there. I talked to Josephine Schiller in Boston, and she says her kids are wild about it, too. It's sweeping the country. <laughs> Remember when it was the Roomba? Oh, please, dear. I'm not that old. <laughs> Mommy! Oh, please, Minky. I'm on the televisor. Come on and see your Aunt Helen. Hello, Mink. Hi, Aunt Helen. Look what I've got. What is it, honey? Well, it's a yo-yo. Look, when I unroll it, see? Well, Helen, look! It vanished! Where did it go? Into another dim... <laughs> she means dimension. Uh, <laughs> uh, huh? Aren't they the darndest things? My Timmy brought one home, too. I can't figure out how they work. Make it reappear, honey. Well, there. See? It's easy. Where do you get it, dear? Joe gave it to me, Mom. Mink. Bye, Aunt Helen. Gotta run now. Mink, you come back here. I want to talk to you. Can't, Mom. Zero hours. Five o'clock. Mink! Bye! <sighs> I can't understand it. The child's never been so unruly. Helen, do you suppose that... What? Oh, nothing. Just a wild thought that... Say, the reason I called, I want to get that black and white cake recipe. Oh, and Henry wants his golf clubs. I don't know what he'll do. <coughs> what was that? I don't know. One of the children must have been hurt. I'll, I'll have to run and see. Call me back tonight, will you? All right. Mary, bye. Mink, come here. Yes, Mom? What is it? Who screamed? Peggy Ann. All right, what happened? Well, she got scared and went home. Did you hit her? No, she just got scared. She's a scare baby anyway. We won't let her play anymore. She's getting too old. Mm. Now, Mink, tell me why she cried. No, I can't. Mink, you'll answer me this instant or come inside. I've had enough of this nonsense. Gee, I can't quit now, Mom. It's almost zero hour. Then tell me what frightened Peggy Ann. Okay, she saw a drill. Drill? He almost came through. 
He was just testing. Through what? Those pipes and things we set up. She looked into one of the pipes and screamed, I guess. She saw a drill. And no one hit her. Mm-mm. Very well, Mink. I'll call Peggy Ann's mother and see how she is. And I'll call you for your bath in half an hour. Your father and I want to go out tonight. You won't be able to go out, Mom. Why not? Zero hours, five o'clock, Mom. Hello, dear. Oh, you home already, Henry? Yes, I thought I'd relax for a little before we went to the theater. Where's the little one? Out back. Same game? Same game. They've got a stack of pipes and hammers and spoons a mile high out there. Children, children, why do we have them? They are strange little creatures, aren't they? Even Mink Henry, she's a part of us, and, and yet what do we really know about how she thinks and feels? I didn't mean to start a philosophic discussion. Kids are such a queer mixture of love and hate, though. Even normal, healthy kids, they need you, and they're dependent on you, and yet they resent that dependence. You sound like a child psychology course I once took. I wonder if they ever really forgive the whippings and the commands we have to give them sometimes. I wonder if we ever forgot them when we were children. Look, I'd like to discuss this with you, dear, but we have a theater date, and it's almost 5 o'clock now. What's happened to the kids? They're so quiet. When children are quiet, you know there's some mischief. What? What's that sound? I don't know. Those kids aren't playing with anything electrical, are they? Oh, I'm sure they aren't. At least I... Just the same. I'd better go out and see. Henry, tell them put off the invasion. What? Mary, don't get upset. It's just a game. Good Lord! What's that? Look out the window, Mary! What is Henry! it? Where are the children, Mary? Why are you shaking? What did you see? Henry, Henry, quick, up to the attic. They aren't in the attic. Yes, yes, the attic, quick. Mary! Come back here, Mary! Mary, don't go up. They aren't up there. Mary, are you out of your mind? There's no one up quick, here. Quick, shut the door. Lock it, lock it. But there's nothing up here. What is wrong with you, Mary? Come to your senses. Oh, Henry, Henry, we'll have to stay here and hide. What are you talking about? I saw it through the window, Henry. It was horrible. What? It is an invasion. Mary, for heaven's sake, let's get down out of this attic and talk this over. Sensibly. I I want to find out if Mink is all right. She's all right. She's all right. I saw her. She was leading them around the corner of the house. Leading who? The kids? Shh. Listen. It's nothing. Listen. Huh? The front door. They're coming. Good Lord. Those kids sound like 50 men. Boots on. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not men. Huh? Please, God, don't let them find us. Don't let them find us, God. I, I, I don't understand. Who's there? Shh, don't shout. They'll hear. Who's down there? I demand that you answer me. They're coming. The whole house is shaking. Who? Who's there? Shh, please be quiet, Henry. They might go away. Henry? Henry? Mom? Dad? Are you in the attic? It's Mink. 
Mink, we've got to save her. Henry, you don't understand. She's leading them. What? She's leading them. She's on their side. Oh, please, God. The children? On their she side. told us. She told us, but, but we wouldn't believe her. Henry, they're coming. <gasps> Mom, Dad, we know you're in there. Well, I guess you'd better melt the lock drill. Henry, the lock, it's melting the door. Oh, dear God. <laughs> You've just heard another adventure into the unknown world of the future. The world of Dimension, Dimension X. X. Next week, Destination Moon, a preview of the movie which is soon to have its world premiere in New York, telling the Robert Heinlein story of man's first trip to the moon. Tonight's Adventures in Dimension X Zero Hour was written by Ray Bradbury and adapted for radio by George Lefferts. Featured in the story as narrator was your host, J. Arthur Scott. The leading players in Zero Hour were Layla Ajil as Mink and Cheryl Carter Holdaway as the mother, Ryan Kiernan as the father. Dimension X is produced by Richard Ricks and directed by Dennis Moore. J. Arthur Scott speaking. Join us again as we bring you exciting thrills and adventure, rip-roaring comedy, and shoot 'em up westerns and gangbusters. Next time, when your imaginations will be invited into the theater of the mind that is WBW Theater. <laughs>